this next tweet actually, um, and I'll just go ahead and read what it says here. It says uh, by a member of this committee, the FDA should not approve the COVID vaccines. There are too many reports of infection and spread of COVID-19 among vaccinated people. I'm just clearly pointing out facts from, from public statements. The chair reminds the, the gentleman from California to observe proper decorum. It is a violation of House rules and the rules of this committee to engage in personalities regarding other members or to question the motives of a colleague. Mr. Chairman, I don't know that the gentleman from California was disparaging anyone. He put up a tweet that is a fact that exists online, available for anybody to look at. I was mayor of Long Beach uh, for the last eight years. So we have a large public health department, city about half a million people. Uh, so I saw firsthand the impact of our vaccine rollout and how important it was to public health. And our region in broader LA County was hit really hard during 2020, 2021, during that winter surge. Of course, before vaccines were available, our regional healthcare system was at a breaking point. ICUs were full. On, on certain days, we were losing dozens of lives across LA County. It was a horrific experience. In my city alone, we lost 1,300 people from our community. We know that across the country, we've lost over 1.3 million American lives. One of those lives was my mother. Another was my stepfather. I know the impacts of this pandemic and how destructive it can be on families. Um, I wanna remind us that during that time, even there was a regional quality health index around, uh, on, on the quality of air and the amount of crematoriums that were actually uh, having to be in operation were damaging um, health air quality. That's how horrific the time was. And I think it's important to remember um, how, how bad uh, the pandemic actually impacted us because I think we have a tendency to forget um, the lives impacted um, and the real impact to our economy as well. Uh, we did our, everything we could to get folks vaccinated in Long Beach. We were the first city to vaccinate 99% of our seniors in California, the first city in the state of California to vaccinate our teachers. Both the governor and the president called our approach a national model. But I'm very concerned about the attack on vaccination efforts. I'm very concerned when folks within the Congress, even on this, on this committee, uh, put out disinformation about what vaccines are there are 3 million Americans today that are likely alive thanks to vaccinations. We know this. And despite this, many of our colleagues and the majority have chosen to undermine COVID vaccinations in general. I, I want to also point out that uh, misinformation um, hurts our efforts. We know that Republicans in general are two and a half more times likely to believe misinformation. And studies have shown that states with higher vaccination rates have had significantly fewer COVID deaths. So these are facts. I wanna share some examples of this harmful misinformation today and the rhetoric that has actually led to, I, I think, um, a huge uh, uh, public health emergencies in this country. This is the first uh, one tweet that was, that's actually been sent out um, by a member of, of this committee, um, which essentially says that we're suggesting that COVID vaccines are associated with nearly 6,000 deaths and actually encouraging folks to not get vaccinations. Do Dr. Tan, what, what, what do you think about this claim about the 6,000 deaths around vaccinations? Well, in this country, we have a very, very robust vaccine um, system that looks at all the different potential adverse effects that may be associated with vaccines. So the problem is, is that some of these deaths, even though they are reported, it may have been the vaccine was given, but the death was not That's due absolute, to the vaccine itself. Absolutely right. And to say actually, to say no, do not get the vaccine is completely irresponsible. Would you agree with that? I agree. Do Dr. Tan, uh, I also would like to go to the second. The gentleman will suspend. I'm just clearly pointing out facts from, from public statements. The chair reminds the, the gentleman from California to observe proper decorum. The issues we are debating are important ones that members feel deeply about. While vigorous disagreement is part of the legislative process, members are reminded that we must adhere to established standards of decorum in debate. Remarks of that type are not permitted by the rules and are not in keeping with the best traditions of our committee. The chair will enforce these rules of decorum at all times and urges all members to be mindful of their remarks. Because we customarily throughout the Congress will take quotations and quotes and use them once they appear in the public record. I think this is in keeping with that, and I don't think this was an effort to disparage, but an effort to instead point out what a particular member or members of this committee may have put out themselves in the public space that we all refer to as social media. At this point, 
it is the ruling of the chair that the gentleman may proceed. However, I remind the gentleman to be cautious and to understand the decorum as he proceeds with his remaining time of one minute and 46 seconds. Thank you very much. I actually, I'll just read the next few public statements. I appreciate that. This tweet actually says that vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Vaccine passports and mass mandates create discrimination against unvaxxed people who trust their immune systems to a virus that is 99% survivable. Do you think that this tweet, which compares vaccinated people um, to, to Jewish folks living under the Nazis, what kind of impact would this have, you think, on public health? I think it would have a negative impact on public health, and I respectfully disagree with that particular um, sentiment that has been put forth. I mean, we know that um, vaccines are life-saving, and they should be made available to everyone Th so that there's no disparity. Thank you very much, Dr. Tan. I, I really appreciate that. I think it's really important for us to, re to remind the committee and the public about public statements that are made um, by members of this committee, as, particularly as, as questions are asked. And so thank you very much all for your service. I yield back.